What is going on? Welcome to Human Movement. Today you need some kind of broomstick, PVC pipe, something like that, and otherwise comfortable flooring, mats, carpet, yoga mat, wherever you need. Let's get going with some preparatory movement before our main work of the day. Find your squatting position, and I want you to come down into the bottom of the squat, whether this is early in the morning for you, midday, or late at night. Now that we're down here, I'm gonna lean most of my body weight to my right side. And with my left elbow or forearm or wrist or palm, I'm gonna push outwards on my left knee. I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna release that knee slowly with some control. Okay, if you're a little bit less flexible, it's gonna look more like this. Just pushing on the forearm a bit, couple inches of movement, couple centimeters or palm, trying to lock up the elbow. A couple more seconds, we're not really counting reps here, just trying to work on the hips. On your next rep, give me a pause with whatever you're able to do, elbow, forearm, palm, wrist. You can tell that I am leaning away from the knee to help open up the hip. Slowly relax out of that, okay? Give yourself a break from your squat if you need to, otherwise on your second side, Let's get into it. And what you'll note here is I'm doing my best to keep my feet flat. My heels are staying on the floor. I am, again, leaning away from the knee that I'm pushing outwards. If I don't lean away, that just makes it harder, okay? That'd be a little bit easier. A couple more, okay? Could look like this. If you're a little newer to this type of work, all good. Let's do one more and hold. Number five, four, three, two, one. Good, standing on up. Next movement I really like, it's gonna be a blend of some shoulder overhead flexibility as well as spinal rotation. I'm gonna to face to the side. I want you to point your, your feet straight at me or to another direction if it's helpful for you. Bend your knees. Uh, recall if you've done in the past with me thoracic reach backs, which would be keeping your hips Still, they're not gonna move. You would rotate with your upper body and reach behind you, okay? Staple movement at movement strength, we like it a lot. What we're gonna do today is first do an overhead shoulder reach and then blend that into that backwards reach. And you're gonna feel a really nice uh, challenge in your shoulder blade mobility with this movement. So, knees bent, hips are still, don't let them move. You're gonna raise your arm overhead. Once you max out your overhead reach without using your spine too, too much, okay, like so, I'm not trying to use this too, too much, I'm gonna start to backwards chop and rotate through the upper back. Okay, we're gonna come back, hold that overhead position as you rotate and look behind. Add the eyes for sure, one more. Reaching up, looking back, nice, good. Other side, I'll show you from the front. Toes straight, again, knees a little bit bent. We're gonna bring one hand up, other hand, hopefully. And then as you're reaching backwards, you're gonna start to rotate through the rib cage and spine. Nice, breathe. Rotate, look, reach, look where you're reaching as best you can. And uh, we're gonna do one more rep on this side, because this is my, my gummy side. Keeping those hips really dialed in, really straight. Good, all right. Next, let's do a little Jefferson curl for our spine as we continue to get going here today. Knees completely straight to start. Bent is okay if you need to. You're gonna tuck your chin to your chest. Hope we all know this by now. Slide down your legs. You're gradually rounding your spine. You're gonna go as deep into your bottom position as you want, and then we'll bend our knees on the first rep as we stand to reset. Repeat, tuck your chin around the upper back, around the mid back, around the low back, nice and smooth. Now you can bend your knees again as you come on up, or if you want to with me, you keep your knees straight. Let's do a couple more. Yeah, one more. One more would be fantastic. Tuck the chin around the upper back. Gradually round to the mid back, low back. Keep the knees straight, keep the hips where they are. Little pause there, 
and then make your way up bent or straight knees. Okay, let's go into another squat. This time let's do some sky reaches. So just like your first one, comfortable, normal squatting width. Make your way down. And uh, same principles here. We want to try and keep our feet as flat as we can, okay? I'm going to lean all my weight or most of my weight, excuse me, towards my left leg. And I'm going to reach and look up towards the ceiling with my right arm and eyes. I'm going to come back down, clasp my hands for a second, and then again. Okay? Think about working to your 80% range. So you're not really striving for that last 20%, which could be maybe a little bit stressful if your body's still a little bit cold or maybe this is just a challenging movement. Stay within your 80% accessible range so that this is comfortable. And maybe that means for you, it's not even reaching so much, right? It's not even turning so much. It's not extending the elbow. Hold this next rep with me. Let's hold for another five. Feet are flat, four, three, two, one. Like our first squat, take a little rest here if you need to. I'm going right to my other side. First rep's always kind of a little practice rep, a little probe rep. How does the movement feel today compared to the past? How's your body feeling today relative to whatever training you're doing? A few more. Staying in that 80% accessible range. Feet flat. Let's do one more. I think we're all feeling really good. And hold. A couple deep breaths as we're holding, looking up, reaching. You can be more relaxed with the arms if you want to, or you can be more vigilant, really reaching, really extending through your elbow, shoulder. Good. Nice. Okay, we're gonna stand back up. And let's do a good morning drill here. Usually with a good morning, we're gonna hinge at our hips, we're gonna bend over, and as we stand up, we're gonna fully open up our hips. Today, I want you to always stay a little bit bent over. So you're gonna go deep into your good morning, you're gonna come up a little bit, you're gonna go back down into it, okay? We're gonna do this in two different positions. What this will do is it will just work the hamstrings and hips a little bit more because we're not standing up, which takes tension out of the movement. So I'm gonna stand with my feet right underneath my hips. My knees are gonna be completely straight, but you can bend your knees a little bit or a lot as you need to. Try and keep a long chest, long reaching forehead as you hinge at your hips. And then you're gonna um, extend your hips up just a couple degrees, re-hinge back down. Come back up, re-hinge back down. And note how my back is completely flat. So the work is all being done in my hip joint as I'm hinging up and down about five or six more times. Again, knees are completely straight if you're more advanced, like so. And in that, in that case, I'm really reaching my body long. A little bit more conservative would be bending my knees takes the stress out of the hips. Come on up. So you should feel that constant kind of like pulling and releasing on the hamstrings as we do that, even if you are more flexible. Now, I'm gonna have you widen your feet to more of a sumo stance. If you're more flexible, I want you to really challenge yourself, kind of be in a wide straddle standing position. If you're less flexible, just a little bit wider than the previous movement. And we're gonna do the same thing. Knees are a little bit bent or completely straight. We're gonna hip hinge, keeping the back flat, keeping the head long and reaching. And then whatever point is good for you, you're gonna stop, you're gonna stand back up a little bit and do a few more of these repetitions, okay? And this is just gonna change a little bit of the angle that we're attacking, okay? The posterior side of the body. Don't want this to be stressful on your low back. So if it is, maybe you go back to the first variation or you do regular good mornings where you stand all the way up, take the tension out of the body and then re-enter it. But if you can, it looks like this. For another three, another two, another one. Step out of that, good. Down to the floor. Last thing before we begin some of our, our kind of our main movements for the day, let's just do some wrist loading. So. Hands on the floor. Let's begin with some improvised, just hands going at different angles. If you want to think about your middle finger being your kind of like straight finger or the finger that you're turning the direction. Turn it backwards, turn it south, turn it inwards, turn it outwards, east and west, turn it upwards, north, okay? Or if you think about a clock, think at like 11 and one, 
think at five and at seven. Try and be able to get your middle finger turning any and all directions. And if you can't today, that's where you want to be over time. I'm going really fast here. You might need to be a lot more ginger. That's okay. Nice. Couple more seconds. Give the hands a little shaky shake. Next, let's do some very traditional side to side leans. So those middle fingers now turning at three and nine. I'm gonna to rock to one side, lift the unloaded arm, rock to the other side, lift the unloaded arm, back and forth a couple times. Okay, just looks like this. You don't have to do that lift if you don't want to. I like it. One more. A little shaky shake if you need it. And then the last thing we're gonna do here before grabbing our stick, whatever you have available, is gonna be uh, some corkscrews. Uh, you're gonna plant your hands on the floor. Again, I like middle finger here slightly turning outwards, not straight on towards you guys. And then you're gonna gently turn the elbows in. Doesn't need to be stressful. And then you're gonna gently turn those elbows forwards. Doesn't need to be stressful. Keeping the elbows straight, you're gonna have to go back and forth a couple more times. And I say it all the time, but what we're actually doing here is rotating in our shoulder joint, but what you're seeing is the elbow move. So not so much an elbow exercise, more of a shoulder exercise. A couple more. The hands are stationary, planted. They're not going anywhere. Good. Really nice. Hope, uh, hope you're feeling great from all that stuff. Some squatting work, some hip hinging work, some spine stuff. Should be feeling awesome. Getting your uh, stick, whatever you're using today. We're gonna do some prone PVC lift offs. There's a billion different names for these. The name doesn't matter. What matters is that you're gonna do it. <laughs> in a few moments, you guys are gonna lie on your stomachs with me. I want you to think about keeping your nose close to the floor, it doesn't have to touch. But more importantly, you're gonna keep your chest on the floor. Once we're laid out, your arms are gonna be extended. You're gonna be attempting to lift the stick on and off the floor. And by keeping your chest on the floor, you're gonna keep this a shoulder mobility movement, a shoulder strengthening movement, really. Um, but if your chest is peeling away, you're gonna be using spinal mobility, which isn't necessarily wrong, it's just not what we're trying to target. So, watching first if you need to. I'm gonna lay out on the floor and try and talk a little more quietly into the mic. I'm gonna grab the stick, and if I'm newer to this or if this can be really difficult, you can grab wider, okay? All good, wider's gonna be a little bit easier. More of a shoulder width grip will be more challenging. As you're starting to get set up, I want you to think about squeezing your butt, pressing your heels and toes together, okay? Taking a small breath in, and then you're gonna trap your air into your stomach, okay? So you're getting a little tension in your abdomen, Elbows are straight, and now you're gonna to attempt to lift that stick off the floor and rest it back down. Whether you can get a couple inches, a couple centimeters, a couple millimeters, a foot if you are very flexible. Okay, we're gonna do about eight to 10 more reps. And what I like to tell people is think about smoothly and gradually pulling the stick off the floor. Try not to jerk it, smoothly pull. Take some time to get some strength to the shoulders and tension. Build that tension. Couple more. Let's get two more. Last one. Good, and a little break. Okay, leave that stick where it is. We're gonna need it again, because we're gonna do just a second set of that after our pairing movement. Okay, classic movement. Uh, if, you, if you know me at all, this is one you've probably done in the past. I really like it. Active groiner or active lunge lift off. Again, there's probably a billion names for this on the interweb somewhere. So you can have hands on either side of your foot. I like hands on the inside of the foot. It's just more comfortable. And then I'm gonna take my back knee and slowly extend it off the floor. Check. And then I take some time to put it back down. And then we're gonna repeat, just like that PVC flexion drill, 
shoulder flexion. I'm gonna slowly take this knee on and off the floor. And this is gonna challenge the left, in my case, my left hip flexor, which is lengthened right now, it's an extension. So we're gonna challenge it through actively stretching it in a range of motion, which is gonna give it some strength too. Breathe, can't hear you, but I know you need to be breathing for this. And on this last one, we're gonna hold the top position for just a five second pause, four second pause, three, two, one, rest. Take your time now as we transition legs. My left leg comes up. Again, hands for me are on the inside of the foot. You can go on either side. You can go on fingertips if you want to. You can go on knuckles. I advocate palms. Clearly it's the best choice in terms of distributing the weight on your hands. Extend that back knee and rest it down. And again, now this is really challenging. You can go slower than me. You can also do less reps. Maybe you do just four or five, okay? And then you're done, that's fine. Modify what you need. Make sure you're breathing. Couple more. I'm barely touching the floor in the bottom because I'm trying to keep tension in the back leg. So I just do a little baby tap and hold your next rep, please. With this next, with this second leg, really try and straighten the knee, okay? Don't want it to be too bent. If you're able, really lock it out, drive the heel down and rest. Good. A couple seconds to breathe here. We're gonna go back to our PVC shoulder flexion lift off. You might feel in the second set that you're actually able to get a little bit more range of motion and that's because we're repeating it and your body gets better at what you repeat. Second round, now that we know what to do, try and get a little bit more tension through your elbows. So you're gonna think about maybe a little bit reaching the stick away from your body and lifting, that'd be more advanced. Or as if you had a twig and you're snapping the twig, try and snap the stick, okay? Again, that'd be more of an advanced drill for someone who's a little bit more advanced. You don't need to do those things if you're not there yet. So, let's get into position. Start down, down on your stomach. Grip that stick out in front of you. Bring your feet together at the heels and at the toes, okay? Start to squeeze your butt, press your feet down to the floor. The feet should not lift. And when you're ready, tension through the belly, little breath, you're gonna lift that stick off the floor. And repeat. Okay, don't jerk. Strong, smooth pull. Chest is on the floor. Catch yourself if you're arching that chest off the floor. And with me, try and hold the next rep at the top for 10 seconds. Let's go. One, two, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Woo. That was wonderful, but we know the best is yet to come. We're gonna do round two of our active groiner. Uh, when you're ready, hands on the inside, hands on the outside, whatever it looks like for you. I think for me, I'm gonna challenge myself, just because it is harder, I find. Hands on either side of the foot. A little bit harder whether on my uh, forward leg to hold the position. Okay, harder's not bad though. Harder can challenge my body in different ways, which can be good. Lifting that back knee on and off the floor. Either a big rest and a big pause on the bottom if you need to, or minor pause, baby tap. Let's hold the next rep at the top for 10 seconds. Nine, eight, try and straighten that back knee more, okay? Drive the back heel to the floor more. Three, two, one, good, relax. Other side and last time before we finish off the session with a couple easier movements. Other leg forwards. Set your hands where you want them to be. And begin those knee lifts on and off the floor. So a really nice drill for people who are struggling with lunges, moving their leg backwards and say like a reverse lunge, walking lunge, stationary barbell lunge. 
This is gonna help a lot with that, with the rear hip flexibility. But also good for people who are just trying to get more flexible, generally speaking, with the front of their hips for any kind of splits. Okay, hold the next rep. Woo, legs are working. 10, nine, straighten the back knee. Eight, seven, six, keep holding. Five, four, heel down, drive that back heel down. Three, two, and step on out of that. Stick away. Stay there, stick. Couple seconds of transition. What we're now gonna to move to is two last movements. Uh, we're gonna do a toe grab squat and super awesome but super basic cat cow. And we're gonna go back and forth from one range of motion to the other. And I want you to pause the end ranges, okay? Just pause and hold. Sometimes we'll do a two second, sometimes we'll do a five second, sometimes we'll do a, a 10 second pause, okay? Hope your hips have recovered from those uh, active lunge liftoffs, active whatever you wanna call them. Back down to our squat where we started the day. Hope it feels better than when you started. Couple seconds. Now we're gonna extend the, toe, the hips up. Hands on your toes, hands on your ankles, hands on your shins, palms on the floor, whatever you want. Okay, if you're more advanced, you could squat on top of something and have hands on a lower deficit object. Whatever you wanna do, come on up and hold this position that we visited also in the Jefferson curl when we started as well back down, okay? A couple more seconds. I guess I talked a lot in the last one, so we'll do just about one or two more. And now as we extend the hips up and extend the knees, hold for a little bit longer, please. If you can, you're gonna take a breath in, and as you exhale, you're gonna try and get deeper into your forward fold. If you feel like you should, if you can, you don't have to. So that means I can get more of my hands on the floor. That means I pull my chest closer to the floor and to my shins, back down. Number three and last one. About 10, 15 second resting squat hold. Play around with where you want your knees to be. They can be sitting back, okay? Which is gonna be good for people who have less ankle mobility but lots of hip mobility. But a more balanced squat is leaning forward because now I'm exercising some ankle mobility, not just hips. A Couple more seconds and then we're gonna do a 15 second forward fold, 20 second forward fold hold. Forward fold, hold. <laughs> Let's do it. Knees, hips extend. Find your position where you wanna be. Start to take some deep breaths in. Out. Feels good, get a little bit deeper. If you're more advanced, really straighten those knees absolutely as much as you can. Okay, less advanced, stay in a position that's safe for you, comfortable. More advanced, walk your feet together like me now. Straighten the knees more. One more. Good. Okay, a couple seconds to recover. We're gonna do the same mechanic. Two second pause, two second pause in either end range. Build in time, build in time. Last at longer, last at longer with our cat cow, okay? <clears throat> Back down to our hands and knees. Wrists right under your shoulders, knees right underneath your hips. What I like to tell people from time to time here is when you're doing your cat cow, for what our goals are, you shouldn't really be moving your bum, okay, or your shoulders forward. So bum back or shoulders forwards, they're gonna stay packed where they are. So get some tension in those joints if that will help you here. Get some rigid, rigidity through your shoulders and your hips. Just a two or three second pause in our rounded flexion position. Really tuck your chin to your chest, really round that back. Okay, and now two or three seconds in your arch. And hold. We'll go five to seven seconds in our rounded flexion position. Really try and press up through the upper back, mid back, low back, round all that, tuck your tailbone. Think about pulling your belly button towards your, towards your chest. And now extending, elbows are completely straight, hips and shoulders do not move. Keep in position and hold your arch. All right, 15 second pauses. Round. And hold. Let's 
Some of you are thinking, holy cow, that guy actually shut up that whole time. And now extending, 15 seconds. Point your chest up more. If it's helpful for you, squeeze your shoulder blades together. But I want locked elbows and arch. Extend. Really nice. We're gonna call it there for today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, if you like this, drop a comment, drop a like, and uh, hope to see you in the future.